Welcome to Five Writers, Five Minutes, where we take you behind the scenes of our latest books. My name is Zanny Louise. I'm Deborah Abella. I'm Liam Tanner. I'm Sarah Armstrong. And I'm Tristan Banks. Well, guys, I'm excited to pick your brains and find out what good writing habits you have up your belt. What sort of things would you like to share with the people listening? Yeah, this is a good one because... I know when I'm not writing well, I don't actually have good writing habits. I know that I'm squeezing my writing in between things or I'm just I'm not actually giving it the time and the space and the dedication and the love that it needs. So in order to try and do that, what I do is I try to when I wake up, I do some like exercise first, you know, brush brush my teeth, wash my face, uh, and then try and get to my desk as soon as possible. And I've heard other people like Kate DiCamillo say she literally wakes up at 530 puts the coffee on and and heads to her computer straight away but I feel like I do need like air in my brain first um I then turn off the internet on a good day and I won't even look at it before midday especially if I don't have anything that I know that's pressing I physically turn it off on my computer so that if I think oh this pair of shoes I wanted to buy I'm going to have a look it, it I have to turn on the internet I have to then wait for it to look blah 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 So do anything you can to reduce those distractions. I leave my phone, I'm on the third floor in the attic of our house. And so I leave my phone downstairs, like all that stuff to try and make sure that the, the, the writing and the story is king because it needs that space and time. I I agree with that. I I think it's, it's kind of about self-discipline, isn't it? It's um, for me, it's about making a time when you're going to write and sticking to it and making it a priority. Yeah. So again, for me, it's mornings, like that's, that's when I've got writing energy. Mm. So I get up early and I work till lunchtime and I, I work in 25 minute blocks. So it's not like I kind of sit down at six o'clock and work straight through, but I work in 25 minute blocks and then I take an, a five minute break and then I do another 25 minutes. So I can sort of keep going for that 25 minutes, you know, without sort of feelings if I have to get up. Um, Afternoons, I do administrative stuff. I I find I can't do creative stuff in the afternoons. Um, Another thing that ties in with the self-discipline is I think you have to be selfish. You have to protect that time that you've promised yourself. And I think that particularly when you're starting out, what we do to a lot of people, it doesn't look to them like work. You know, it sort of looks like a little hobby or something like that. So they think it's fine to interrupt you. And and I've learned to say, oh, you know, really want to see you, but come back after lunch. The third thing is trying not to get stuck with the idea of writing a good first draft, uh, to just get words on the page. And that if I worry about making it really good first time round, I end up paralyzing myself. So it works best for me if I play and experiment and try out different things and have fun. I agree with all of those. I do the 25 minutes on and five minutes off to Leon, which I think is called the Pomodoro technique. I find yep. that really helpful because in those 25 minutes, you know, I just don't let myself, you know, get up and put hang the washing out or whatever else there might be to do around the house. Cause I know I've got those five minutes in between. Mm. The two. And I think that writing regularly uh, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes, it's just you develop a momentum on a project, but not just on the project. It's like you stay in touch with your deepest creativity, I think, that way. And then if, when I'm doing that, when I'm writing off and I just sort of can go deeper and find more interesting and wild and exciting ideas more quickly, which I think is great. I feel like it's economical. Um, I think reading is also a good writing habit. You know, not to get sucked into the, you know, watching stuff, the screen and everything, because reading is a fantastic way to learn about writing, both reading for sheer pleasure and not even thinking about what the writer has done, but also that thing of why am I so gripped here or why have they lost my attention? Another good habit is just, yeah, of course, to accept that first drafts are always a bit wobbly, uh, but also just to bring that experimental approach to rewriting, like I'm going to just try this out and see what happens. To not, yeah, to not yeah. get too sort of fixed on the first thing that lands on the page. That's a habit I have to re- keep reminding myself to adopt. I'm like, no, no, this is just, just a mere outline and I will come back in and really mess it up. I tend, I, I'm just going to play devil's advocate and sort of look at the other side of things when you become too obsessed with your with your work that you don't let any space in your life for other things. So rather than needing the motivation to write, 
I tend to sometimes wake up at 5.30 and I'll do that thing where I roll out of bed too and just start writing my morning pages and then I roll onto the laptop. Well, I don't physically roll onto the laptop, but I, I start writing on the laptop and I'm so um, scared of losing that that time of motivation before I start thinking too much and before I get into my logical brain that I'm really focused on on writing in the mornings. And then at about midday, I will switch over and I'll start doing logistical stuff like Glenn was saying and emails and all the things that people have to do to run their writing business. But I'll often find that I'm still working at 5.30 in the afternoon. So I think, and I often don't really take a lunch break, which is a, a thing that I started out doing years ago, um, not really taking proper breaks or anything. So I think that's one thing that you have to be careful of too, that, um, you don't get so obsessed with doing the thing. You don't get so excited about your creative stuff that you make your, you tire yourself out and you get mm -hmm. sick. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, just on the other side, once you've got over that bit where you, you, you're doing it every day and you're committed to it, just be careful. You don't burn yourself out as well. Oh, between you all, you just have so much balance and wisdom. <laughs> and I just want to totally change everything I'm doing and do it your way, all of your way. Um, yes. Well, the reason I ask is because I have this aversion to discipline. It's like my back goes up saying, okay, you're going to tell me how to do things. That's I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to follow the rules. Um, so I cannot create any discipline for myself. I never have been able to. You're just um, massively productive. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yes. I kind of have to she trick is. myself into it, I think. Um, but I do get up early. Uh, I love the mornings like you guys. Uh, I have been trying to do a bit of afternoon work at the moment just because I'm flapping around with other things. And it is just not productive in the same way. You, my brain is just not that fresh. I like, um, I really hear what you're saying, Tristan. And I think for me, it's about creating a general well-being around the writing. So for me, I have to be in a really good frame of mind. And that means getting enough sleep, mm -hmm. uh, exercising. I'm really big on exercise, uh, you know, being in nature, keeping up my social connections, all of that's a big part of my well-being because that enables me when I am at the computer to, yeah, really uh, get absorbed in the creativity yeah. and get really lost and in the joy of writing and not feel weighed down by it, I think. So I think that's, you know, where my thing about discipline comes in. I do try and approach it you know, with joy and with play. And that's, I think, where I get my best work. Anyway, mm. we have just covered some serious ground here. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of us. Um, so thank you for listening and tune in to other episodes. We've got lots of great tips for you to delve back into. And you'll find us on YouTube and the podcast. See you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.